about doing it. But it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Just more so, just just trying to get back healthy. You know, I think you know, just trying to realize that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, a lot of times we can get caught up in the moment and not think long term. But for me, I'm just thinking about just doing the work now. So you know, when I'm finally back out on the court, I can actually move. You know, somewhat. Most part, it's making a full recovery. Man. Mm. I just want to make a full recovery, just get back to enjoying basketball. Man. Basketball is a, a way of life, I think, you know, I think basketball kind of, it kind of brought structure to my life, um, discipline, routine, um, you know, I was able to meet lifelong friends, um, some great people, some great mentors, um, and it's, you know, I've, I've travelled all over the world because of this basketball, you know, um, I've got a free university education, free education at, you know, a prestigious prep school. Um, so it's opened up a lot of doors for me, man. You know, of course, you know, I've had to put in the hard work, of course. Um, but yeah, it, it's really opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, graduated from Riley University. From there, I went on to play pro. Played Cyprus, uh, Greece, France, Hungary, uh, Ukraine. Sweden, yeah, a um, bunch of places. Uh, most recently, played back in, in the BBL for the past five years. Um, haven't played this year due to injury and rehabbing. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, that's pretty much me. How was that going? Uh, I've been working for about four or five years now, just. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the fifth year starting now. Okay. We started from Back in the good old days where, where nothing was really much in plan, but we, we're here now after five years getting better. <laughs> I worked with him on any aspect in terms of his, his, his body condition. So, okay. all injuries, or muscle pulls, or, or sprains, or severe injuries like this particular one, everything has been done throughout this, this period of time, in the past, past um, five years. So, it could be a good days in which we just have to do a little bit of massage. It could be days we have to fight through the rehabilitation side and mm -hmm. you know get a bit harsher treatments done. It could be days in which I just put tape on him. It could be days depending on the situation. But yeah, we've, we've been together from from good and bad, <laughs> highs and lows. On the day the injury happened, you know, we were playing against Sheffield Sharks up in Sheffield. Um, you know, it was a normal, normal game. You know, I warmed up. I went through my routine. Um, felt a bit achy, but you know, there's nothing new. I think every basketball player throughout the season has their little injuries and stuff. Um, yeah, so everything was normal. Um, game started. You know, I, I felt pretty fresh, mm -hmm. rejuvenated, um, and then yeah, I guess the end of the second quarter. Position, I remember exactly. It was the last position before the half time. You know, made a play. I think it was like maybe it was like seven seconds to go before half time, actually. Mm -hmm. um, made a play, and you know, my foot actually slipped on the floor. And after he jumped, I saw him already like in a, in a abnormal position. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I just heard it, you know, I just heard the snap. It, it kind of sounded like a, a branch being broken, you know. Um, yeah, and then just instantly I knew, you know, I, I could see my bench reacting, um, the crowd, my physio ran over. Uh, I could literally see his kneecap popping up, you know, the pop like this. Uh, um, so instantly I, I knew it was really, really bad. Um, I was panicking myself. Okay. What I was hearing is his shout, his shout still hurts to me sometimes. And when you look down and you see your kneecap literally out of place, I was saying, can you put it back, Cass? And I was trying to 
somehow I'll tell him that I can't because there was a big gap the tele tendon at the front of his knee mm. wasn't there anymore. You know, it's uh it's definitely traumatizing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, it's, it's part of sport, it's part of sport man. I remember thinking like, why me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you start to think, you start to play back all the plays in the game mm -hmm. and you think, oh, you know, maybe if I didn't come for the handoff, mm -hmm. you know, maybe if I cut that door and I didn't get the ball, it wouldn't have happened. You know, you, you, you start saying what ifs. Yeah. Um, but what's meant to be is meant to be, man, you know what I mean? Um, it's just one of those unfortunate things that happened and, that, you know, unfortunately it happened to me. I mean, I wouldn't really wish this on anyone, you know. It's tough because I mean, if we're speaking about day zero, I mean, my rehab pretty much started the next day. You know, um, I'm still high off morphine. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm laying in the bed. Um, and one of the physios, she comes into the room and she literally starts bending my knee, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I was a bit shocked, like, whoa, 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 you know, what's this? Um, but they call it active rehab. And literally from the first day, you know, you've got to start trying to find a range of motion. Um, you know, they had like these stem, stem machine on, on my quad, trying to build back the muscle, mm -hmm. um, trying to keep it straight to kind of get a little bit of a um, downward, hyperextension, I mean, not hyperextension, but, you know, yeah. just, just trying to make sure that my knee could actually lock out mm -hmm. fully. Justin, this is your first time watching back the injury. Um, can you take a look through it and just tell me your immediate thoughts, having experienced it now for the first time? As, as, as I thought it would be, you know, you can't really see the extent of the injury on the video. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, it takes me back to the moment, you know, of being in that exact moment, planting my foot down, my foot slipping, hearing the, the snap. Um, but I, I think it's something that, you know, was important for me to watch to kind of get over. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's not to say that I've gotten over it because, you know, there's still, you know, a, a sense of, PTSD there, you know, um, something that kind of will never go away. Um, but yeah, man, it, you know, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm kind of wired differently because it's just, you know, it's one of those things you kind of charge it to the game, you know. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, I, I've been blessed to have a, a long enough career where I didn't really have any major injuries, mm -hmm. you know. So you kind of have to count your blessings at the same time. So. How do you see the next couple of months for Justin in, in terms of... The next of, couple of months, yeah. Justin needs to mainly just work on his mental state, to be honest. Because from what I've assessed and from what I've seen and SNC, he's working with Duncan, best in the business in the SNC world. There's no severe repercussions beside maybe a little bit of muscle mass that's different than the, the injured, the uninjured leg. So all he needs to do is just get comfortable in this new, new state. Obviously, post surgery and post rehabilitation, and all he needs to do is just just work on his confidence. To be honest, mm -hmm. get used to back being on a court, get some shots up, get into in game situation, maybe run a bit more with the ball, maybe get a scrimmage, yeah. just to get back to you know being in the basketball world, not in the rehabilitation world. That's that's the next step for him for sure. That's what I believe. It all sounds very positive. Definitely. It's good when to you hear. put in good work, man, there's only good outcomes. You only did good work, so I have. 
I'm not saying this just to make him feel better because you know how I work. I would tell him how it is. <laughs> I would definitely tell him how it is. And then getting treatments every now and then just to make sure everything is, is balanced, is relaxed, is in place and continue to work what he's been working on. Love the football now, bro. I think that makes him happy, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't care where he is. No, no, he, he be ballet. <laughs> he still does both, but, you know, I think because in school, all of his friends are playing football. Yeah, it's so, like you know I mean? it's the like, environment. Yeah. Well, you know, like you said, whatever makes him happy, I'm, I, I'm, I'm down. Whatever like, makes him happy, man, I don't care where he is. It's their life, you know, you can't, exactly. you can't live your life through that. You can only support them, that's it. That's all it is, really. That's it. Even the scar looks impeccable. I can't even see it anymore. It's amazing. What's this that you're doing now? This is scraping. It's called instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. That's the whole formal definition of what I'm doing. Okay. What I'm doing is it's literally scraping the tissues around that particular area to stimulate the skin, mm -hmm. promote a bit of blood flow, but I'm mainly desensitizing because this gets to the brain faster before pain, mm -hmm. this sensation right here. Okay. So it gets desensitized and you yeah. feel less less painful, less worried about that whole situation, the whole area. So I'm going over the actual scar just to make sure that it has no repercussions. We've been doing this even when it happened and we didn't really like it. Every time I was getting close to it, it was just jumping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because we kept working on it, the sensation came back and it desensitized, so there was no more pain. Mm -hmm. But I'm also providing blood flow just to make sure that the blood is there to try and regenerate. Yeah, when you, when you first started doing that, it was very I painful was like, for me. What the hell is this? And obviously <laughs> when you cut your skin, your skin receptors has to have to uh, crawl back into their places yeah, yeah. to make a connection, right? Yeah. In order to do that, you have to stimulate them. And this was very painful. At one point, you felt like numb, for example. Yeah. Well, when I had the surgery, yeah, my whole shin, it felt like someone was, was getting their nails and doing this, like just scraping it. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. I felt like. Yeah. Like, and, and, and like when I touched it, it, didn't, it felt like someone else was touching it. Really? So it does. It's crazy, yeah. It's funny how it but works. But mainly on, on the shin area. And if you don't do it when you're actually regenerating, you lose the sensation. That's yeah. how bad, really? bad the body is, yeah. Oh, wow. Even when you get like surgeries in general, you have to somehow stimulate. And this is a good yeah. weapon to do it. Like mm -hmm. fingers or something, you, you got to use something. Because otherwise you're going to lose the sensation. The neurons yeah. and the nerves, See, like, they're you know, not going to... They feel it. Ooh. Really? Like this one here. Yeah, that one there, I feel it. It's on the bone as well, isn't it? I didn't believe in it, but I tried it on me as well. I've been, I've been using this and with ligaments and pain, uh, skin sensation, ligaments and tendons. This is absolutely amazing. Yeah, you better. Yeah, you better. 
Yeah, you're like, oh, that's weird. And that's, that's why you just need to play and play and realize, oh, it's not actually a bad thing. It's just, my knee is different. Yeah, I mean, like, structurally, everything's like something. Um, I've known Justin for a very long time since he's been a young boy, really, because I played basketball myself. Mm -hmm. um, and he was one of the up and coming kids that was very good for his age and then obviously he went to America when I was a professional mm -hmm. as we crossed paths at various different uh, summer tournaments and things like that mm -hmm. um, and then I've been working in and around the London Lions organisation for a long time um, and then he was obviously a player there for a number of years. Justin by his own admission is not a fan of the weight room but having had this injury he's dedicated himself in the weight room because he knows that's what's going to get him back on court. Um, and he's been pretty meticulous, like he's been in the majority of the sessions, like always on time, very professional, working hard. Like, I'm lifting now heavier than I was lifting before the injury, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, obviously when I was in college, they make me lift heavy, you know, you're squatting, you're deadlifting, all that kind of stuff. But as a pro, it wasn't something that I focused on, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I would lift, but not like heavy. You know, and specifically on legs. Yeah. Whereas now, you know, I'm lifting now more and I'm lifting pain free as well. But before the injury, you know, I was lifting through pain. So you know, now I can lift now pain free and just develop my whole lower body, man. Favorite part of the workout? push him hard and push him a bit faster than perhaps he was ready for but that's part of building his mental strength as well and uh, I think we're very close to him getting back on court and playing and I'm looking forward to what he can do. Gifts and stuff, so you know, I wear it with pride. You know. Nice, you just always, always. A lot of things drive me, you know, um, my family, my kids, my girlfriend, um, and I think also just just having that never quit mentality, you know. Um, I say this all the time, and a lot of people think I'm biased, but you know, coming from a Bricks and Top Cat program where you have Jimmy Rogers as one of your mentors, you know, we don't really. Really quit on anything, you know. Um, you know. If it gets tough, then we get, get, get tougher, you know. So that's just kind of my mentality. Um, and then, you know, I, I always believe in myself. I always believe in myself, and I, I always know that I can do this, you know. And I know I can do this. It's just having patience, having the discipline, um, and just making sure that I remind myself that there's always light at the end of the tunnel. So you know, I won't be in this state forever. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the rehab is coming towards an end, um, and yeah, I think that's just the way I've been built. I think a lot of people down at Brixton are built that way, and that's just that's not to say anyone else is not built that way. But I can only speak for what I know. Um, but yeah. <laughs> These are from uh, from summer. Get the free stuff. Oh, I am not useful. I'll be honest with you. This is an injury that a lot of people consider to be career-ending and the way he fought back from this 
it couldn't be better it couldn't be stronger so i have nothing but but praise for how much effort he put in how much sacrifices he made how much sacrifices the family made for him as well it is is absolutely amazing it's something that i couldn't be prouder than than than, than now it's a it's some people consider it to be a career ending injury. Justin Robinson said, not really. I'm, 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 I'm better than this. So it's going way, way better than I, I honestly expected. I, obviously, I had high hopes for him to, to recover. But I didn't expect him to go so, so fast and so strong in this short period of time. So, yeah, it's, it's great, honestly. Yes, sir. <laughs> no way, man. They were, they were suffering in cold anyway. I know. Anyway, let me go, let me go. Yeah, I mean, uh, Justin's had a, a very good career up to now, like two-time MVP in the BBL and then suffering this injury, it's quite a severe injury, quite a bad injury, and at the stage of his career, it could be you know, career-defining or career-ending. Um, but fortunately, he's had a good surgery, and he's worked really hard, and he's built up uh, the strength, and now it's just about building the confidence so he can get back out on court and be ready for the next season. Um, I would say I've been focusing more being around for my family, you know, for my kids. Um, this is probably the first time where I've had spare time, if that makes sense. You know, I'm not travelling with the team or I'm not training. Um, even though I'm still occupied with stuff off the court, you know, doing a lot more coaching, mentoring. Um, you know, I've started my own CIC, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that are happening with that. Yeah, man, just trying to stay busy, really. Um, for me, I think young people is my passion, you know, outside of basketball. You know, I just love helping young people. You know, they relate to me, you know, they open up to me. So that's definitely, I, I think, my calling mm -hmm. after basketball. Um, so, you know, what better time than to start it now? So that's what I've done. question um hmm. just realizing who my support system is you know um you know people checking up on me calling me sending me messages you know, always asking how how the rehab going you know just always concerned with my well-being mm -hmm. um so you, you know you, you come to realize who's for you and who's not really for you you know um and again you know no one's entitled to check up on you I, I know everyone's got the, the, their own lives to live mm -hmm. so you know it's not nothing that I take personal but you know during the time of my injury and my rehab you know, you know my friends and my family you know they were, they really stuck by my side so mm -hmm. you know I appreciate them to the fullest I, mean, I would say that the mind is a, is a fragile thing mm -hmm. um, you know sometimes you know, when you go through a traumatic experience or ordeal you can find yourself feeling sorry for yourself, you know? You sit down, oh, why me, you know? You know why did it happen to me, et cetera, et cetera. But you kind of have to pull yourself out of that, that dark space. You know?